All right, friends. Third case. A 14-year-old girl is brought to the gynae OPD with absence of menses, lack of breast development. So I know that estrogen is not there. She is short statured. Okay. Now the pubic and axillary hair development is normal. So androgens are all there. Fine. The USG confirms the presence of the uterus, but ovaries can't be seen. Now that can happen. That can happen. You see the ovaries, if not seen on ultrasound, could mean two things. Either they are not there, either they are so small, streak gonads, dysgenetic gonads that they cannot be seen properly or it is just that uh, the ultrasonologist wasn't able to see them despite they being present. So there could be two of these possibilities. What is the next step in, evolu uh, uh, in evaluation? So friends, remember, if there is estrogen deficiency, there can be two broad causes, ovaries not working or the hypothalamus or pituitary cause. And the way we differentiate between the two is by performing a hormonal profile. So in this question, we will go for a hormonal profile. MRI pelvis, karyotype, MRI brain, these are all going to, these are all investigative modalities in evaluation of primary amenorrhea with lack of breast development or secondary sexual characteristics, but they will come much later. Abhi primarily we want to dis uh, dis distinguish whether it is ovarian problem or whether it is a hypothalamic or pituitary problem. So to come to that conclusion, we can perform a hormonal profile, mainly focusing on FSH levels. All right. So look at the flow chart here. This will help us understand whenever there is primary amenorrhea and there is absent breast development, the next step is to perform a serum FSH. We go for a full hormonal profile. We do the uh, FSH, LH, e diol. We can do the whole hormonal profile. But yes, if you have to choose one, it has to be FSH, which is very, very important. Okay, most important. So after doing the serum FSH, if we find that the serum FSH is elevated, if the FSH is high, that means that the gonads have failed. There are two possibilities, Turner syndrome and gonadal dysgenesis. Now, Turner syndrome is the most common form of gonadal dysgenesis. It is also the most common cause of primary amenorrhea. All right. So apart from those most common things, remember that Turner syndrome is also gonadal dysgenesis, which has three gonads. The other forms of gonadal dysgenesis are also there. All right. But there is one specific type of gonadal dysgenesis, which is Swire syndrome, which is 46 XY karyotype. It's a 46 XY female, but the gonads are dysgenetic. So they develop as females. All right. So Importantly to remember that these are the two possibilities. Clinically, one can come to a likely diagnosis by internal syndrome. There's going to be short stature. And in gonadal dysgenesis or Sawyer syndrome, there is, these are the other gonadal dysgenesis other than Turner syndrome and Sawyer syndrome. The woman is going to be all. all right however however now now when the fsh is raised is a time to go for a karyotype when the fsh is raised we should go for a karyotype because now i want to identify i have made the diagnosis of gonadal dysgenesis and i want to identify which type so after fsh is raised that is the time to go for a karyotypic analysis Moving on to the next thing, what happens if the FSH is decreased? What happens if the FSH is decreased? Now, if there is decreased FSH, that means there is pituitary or hypothalamic cause, right? So please, this is the time to go for an MRI brain, MRI brain to rule out pituitary or hypothalamic tumors. This is a time to rule out pituitary or hypothalamic tumors by performing an MRI brain, right? However, also please remember that there are other than tumors, all right, the other commoner causes, other commoner causes rather than tumors, tumors are less common, right? The other common cause here is Kalman syndrome. Kalman syndrome is a syndrome in which there is GnRH deficiency right from the top, all right? And the woman is going to be tall. And 
constitutional is just a diagnosis of exclusion eventually when we do not find anything else constitutional is a diagnosis of exclusion all right and in constitutional form of uh, delayed puberty or primary amenorrhea the height is going to be short all right so these are the important clinical points to remember when we talk about the differential diagnosis of primary amenorrhea with absent secondary sexual characteristics and decreased fsh all right decreased fsh if this is if is there please perform mri brain to rule out pituitary hypothalamic tumors all right tumors are much less common tumors are much less common all right among colmans and constitutional which is more common constitutional is more common constitutional is much more common than colman syndrome colman syndrome is the second most common and constitutional is the most common cause but but when the fsh is decreased that means in hypothalamic or hypogonadotropic hypogonadism in conditions where decreased fsh is there in those conditions most likely we will find colman syndrome second most common is sorry most commonly we are going to find constitutional as the cause second most common is the colman syndrome however one should also rule out pituitary and hypothalamic tumors which are less common causes all right however overall if you see overall if you see primary amenorrhea the most common cause is gonadal dysgenesis primary amenorrhea with absent breast development or lack of secondary sexual characteristic overall among all of these four conditions that have been described constitutional colmans swiver turner syndrome among all of these the most common is turner's syndrome okay so this is how we are going to proceed through evaluation of primary amenorrhea important all right now each of these individual conditions okay this is just a flow chart of an overview each of these conditions need to be separately studied right and for the detailed description you can subscribe to the app